Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. With the recent patch adding new cards to the game on top of balance changes and the opening of Eternal Ranked again, it's been a pretty hectic week. But you know I got the hookup on what decks are doing the best so far, and I'm here to share them with you. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves, or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what the strong decks are so far, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And starting us off with no surprises here, we have Heimerdinger Jace. With a win rate of 54.03% and a play rate of 7.56%, this is to be expected since this deck was not hit at all in the recent patch, maintaining its very strong meta spot. The best matchups for this deck are Viego Freljord, Nami Samira, Udir Galio, and also Seraphine Set. The worst matchups for this deck are Akshon Nidalee, Nar Nidalee, Zombie Ash, and also Action Pantheon. Getting into the list specifically, it's very similar to recent iterations of Heimer Jace. Of course, not much has changed. It is not running any of the newly buffed cards like I suspected it would, right? It's not running the Senna spell, Dawning Shadow. Even though it got buffed to six mana, we definitely thought this would be run here, but it seems like the deck space for Heimer Jace is very tight and it already has all the necessary tools that it wants, so it's not slowing down and running slow speed vengeance. Something to note is that Epic Scrap Traption is a very, very good card, especially with Adaptatron being able to share the Brash keyword among the tech allies is super good, especially when you play turret wide win cons with Production Surge and with Heimerdinger on the board. You can kind of just run away with a game with all of these really 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 strong keywords all coming together and creating a uh, swarm win moving to the list we have production surge of course really good to cast for six french fries which is going to be spreading the keywords among the turrets scrap traption very good card if you resolve it for six especially because then it's a jace level up point if heimerdinger is on the board that's also an elusive turret really really good double forge chief of course to get the extra spell mana value right from the striking in the early game two quietus for removal triple ferris financier to fetch any more resources that the deck could need that are also synergistic with heimer and jace Mystic Shot for the premium removal, Soul Harvest, same thing as the Quietus, nice little Tua for removal, Double Aftershock for 3 damage removal, and also Landmark removal, really good there. Hextech Handler, still a very strong card, being able to increase tech ally stats everywhere, um, really good because the stacks, if you play multiple handlers, your turrets are going to get out of control and be really, really hard to deal with. Jace, of course, still the same uh, P and Z monster that he's been in recent history, being able to double cast six cost spells, really, really good, especially with Acceleration Gate on big, wide turret boards, kind of just win the game from there. I'm Redinger, same thing, make all the turrets, get all the keywords going, Elusive Turret is still very strong, especially when it gets hit by a buff, then this is very hard to deal with. Formula for a refill, still a very premium P and Z card, probably one of the best. One of Piercing Darkness for Drain 5. One of Shock Blast to deal three to two things. Triple Vengeance because this is the best six cost spell that the deck has access to. Very flexible. Just kill a unit. This uh, this effect is really good, especially right now. If you can play Vengeance against decks that don't have spell protection and their units just die, that's super, super good. One Albus Pharos as a, you know, pseudo win con sometimes. You can hit the enemy Nexus for like, you know, six to eight damage. Super good there. And also Jace Tutor in case you need an extra Jace in the mid to late game. Super nice. And then one of Ruination as a panic button. I would say that Heimerdinger Jace is still like the premium control deck of choice. So if you enjoy that playstyle, you should be playing Heimer Jace to get that LP. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting the Poro King, chilling in Bilgewater, which I'm not so sure why he'd be here. Siren Song did get nerfed recently, so Bilgewater, not the best region. I prefer Poro King with Demacia or Freljord, right? Both super fun recently. So let's go ahead and, I mean, we could just keep this whole hand. I don't see why not. We have Conditional Removal, we have Heimer, we have Scrap Traption. Oh, they full kept their hand too, so we are both very confident about this. So yeah, we're just going to pass the first two turns, play Scrap on turn three, and then play Handler on four, Heimer five, and then we have Removal onwards. We can go ahead and let them develop early. If we draw into Jace, then we'll have the one level up point for him by playing our six cost spell and also getting the Handler buff is super important. So yeah, we'll just take that. 
Only one damage by turn three? Hey. That ain't too shabby. Tough in regen. Nice. Looking like a uh, pouty poro there. Just needs the overwhelm. Spell shield? Sure. Alright, now it's my turn. Ooh, we could also do formula later, which is really nice. Formula now would only give us three mana to work with. Wait, it's actually not that bad. It would just give us three spell mana. Hmm. That's actually kind of interesting. Because we could do formula for six and then play a 3-3. Three, three, scrap Traption. And that's honestly not bad. Hmm. Or we just all in and play a 6-6 six, six one. Nah, let's go ahead and do the 3-3. Three, three. I think 3-3 three, three is good enough. Now, since we resolved a 6-cost spell, we can also play Handler on 4, or we can just go, like, Jace Heimer, right? 4-5. However we want to do it. Here we go. A 3-3 is just, like, good enough, because their units won't reach our stats until they play Mighty Poro from hand, or resolve Double Snacks. So, we don't really have to worry about that for just, you know, 3 mana. Herder? Herder can block us. We take a positive trade. So that's fine by me. Yeah. Seems good. What's really cool is since this is a tech, we also buff that with Handler. Just a little synergy combo to think about. One one challenger, sure thing. Um, I think it'd be really annoying for them if we play our Handler here, not our Jace. But I feel like Jace into Heimer into another scrap is just kind of like really, really good. Attack. I feel like that's the power curve. Poro Snack, yep. Poro Snack means even if we played Handler, they would be able to trade up with the affectionate Poro. Um, taking six. Huh? You grabbing Jace? What are you thinking here? Oh, they don't want to sack the Plunder Poro. That's an interesting choice. Very interesting. Mm, yeah, I can just take four. And then we will open attack, so... First action attack on five, then play Heimer after. Let's get, started. get our quick attack pressure. Try to get four damage to face, or, you know, minus one unit. I'll be taking that. Oral stories, sure thing. So they're going to play Swarm, right? Go wide. We should be able to stop it. We can also kill the Poro King on Summon. Another affectionate Poro. Poro Stories created this card. Yeah, I'd like them to give me at least one action. Then I can get the Jace level here. Piercing or Shock Blast. Oro King's going to be a 5-5 because of the one snack that they have developed. Alright. Snackage. And then attack. Interesting. Um, I'm down to block this with Jace. And then we can do something like Scrap Traption. Or, I have a better idea. What if we do Shock Blast or Piercing Darkness, and then we can double cast Scrap Traption next turn, which is really, really broken as well. Um, I'm convinced it's probably just Shock Blast, actually. Pop, pop. Because I know for a fact I want to do a 6-cost spell this turn to level Jace, and then double cast Scrap for 7. That's just, like, my best play. Be able to... Spend like six on this though and get elusive turrets would be even better. But there's no way for me to do that with a double cast. So I could get the elusive turret now and then also double. Yeah, okay, no, we're gonna go this route. I think this is better. <laughs> this is the cutting edge of progress. I had a little bit of a brain blast. I'm pretty sure just going the brash turret and then the floor be gone and then acceleration gate next turn is like broken for us. Because that levels Heimer immediately right now. And then we'll put keywords on these. Double cast. Get two more floor begons. And if I'm going into like my attack turn, I feel like that's just the best course of action. Because I feel like we're in a winning position. Into Bilgewater Poro King. 
There we go. Get double four be gone. That'll give me a full board. I'm threatening 14 plus 6. 20 elusive damage. And this is before keywords and other shenanigans. Crash. Quick attack. Overwhelm! Oh my god, I got a quick attack overwhelm. Dude, this is like better than Darius. Heavy metal. Well, it's a little late for that. In my opinion. A little late. Because we're going to be threatening 24 elusive damage. And then also 10 overwhelm. Oh wait, I just heard Heimerdinger talk. Like he's not dead right now. There's an elusive. Nice. Good for you. I'm going to grab that with Jace. And then we just hard win. Like, look how broken this is. We were playing control, kind of. But we just, you know, flip the switch and go for an OTK. And there's not a lot the opponent can do about it. This is one of the darker sides of Heimer Jace, if I'm being honest. One of the sides you definitely don't want to be on the receiving end of. Go ahead and grab that, as that's the only elusive blocker. And then, yeah, we're just threatening infinite damage. Holy, this is brash. Go ahead. It's also got Overwhelm. <laughs> Which is not chill at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this just, you know, very chill, I'm thinking. Ike, Rek'Sai, One Tricks, rejoice, because next on the list we have Lurk, coming in with a win rate of 54.63% and a play rate of 6.23%. Holy, this is a fantastic deck to main right now. Its best matchups include Nami Seraphine, Age of Dragons, Shivana Aesol Midrange, and also Timo Caitlyn. The worst matchups for Lurk are Barrier Boys, Shen Jarvan, Akshan Nidalee, Narnora Jin Control, and also Set Karma. So here we are again with another Lurk list. However, instead of using my personal list, I am using the one that most people have agreed on, and I think it's a little crazy. My personal Lurk list only has four non-Lurkers. This one has three, five, six, seven non-Lurk cards. Now that's getting a little too crazy for me, right? Because I am naturally unlucky. However, if you are a really good Lurk player and you main this deck and you can hit, then this is the list that I recommend trying as it has more aggressive utility and it has some defensive tools as well, like the Ryan Negation and also Ruthless Predator for helping level Rek'Sai. So super, super nice. You can also like predict these on defense turn when you don't plan on attacking anyways. And then you have them in your hand or you can keep them in opening hand, right? There's definitely ways to kind of like counterbalance having more non-lurk cards in your deck. But yeah, if you're a really good player, definitely give this a shot. It's got the classic Forsaken Bakai for Predict on 1, Sharkling, Hatchling, of course, love those, Aspiring Chronomancer for Predict on 2, Call the Pack to try to fix your champion hands if you're on a bunch of Rek'Sai and a bunch of Pike. Well, you can put them right on top and then get the Lurk effects, which is what you want. Redfin, Hammer Snout, of course. Next, we have Ruthless Predator to either trade or get an early Rek'Sai level, right? It's really nice where you can, you know, play her one attack faster. And that's super sick if you can resolve that. Snapjaw Swarm for attacking on defense. Rek'Sai herself, of course. Xur'Sai Caller for predict on attack 3. Ike, of course. Rite of Negation as a quick one of being able to stop something that would deny maybe your Pike spell. Or stopping a really big top end win con or a top end removal spell. Rite of Negation just pretty flexible. And honestly, this deck is okay with hitting its own mana gems. You don't have to sack a unit. So yeah, we can just go ahead and do that. Blood in the Water for Rally, of course. And then Triple Xerxerith and Xerxai Dunebreaker to round it out so you have the mid-game threats. I've covered Lurk here and there, but now it seems like it's in a very, very solid spot if you like the aggressive mid-range playstyle. This deck wants to attack a lot, but it also doesn't burn the opponent down super fast. It wants to win somewhere between like turns 5 if it's super high rolling, and like 7, right? So it's a pretty in the middle deck there. That way we have a control deck, a aggressive mid-range deck, and also a full-on aggro deck all covered in this video. So yeah, super sick. Uh, I definitely recommend giving this a shot if you've been thinking about Lurk or if you used to main it, definitely come back. It is absolutely killing it right now. If Lurk is ever above 52%, that's how you know it's got a very solid meta spot. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're fighting Gnar. We're attacking on evens, which is a little tragic. Uh, normally Lurk wants to attack on odds. That way it can start proccing Lurk right away, but that is okay. We can get rid of Blood in the Water here and 
probably keep both of our Bakai's, honestly. Maximum prediction. Hey, maybe we can just fix our hands. Hammer Snout, that's also really good in the early mid game. Vulnerable is a great mechanic for Lurk to have early. Forsaken Bakai, we can just hit literally whatever. These are fine. Extra vulnerable utility, why not? And then we can predict again. And hit. Um, Zerseroth is fine. Cosmic Youngling. Alright, so they're playing kind of like an Age of Dragon strategy, but instead of Aurelian Soul, they're playing Gnar. So let's try to keep that in mind as we progress here. We can give this vulnerable and make it pretty easy to kill with our Caller. So I'm down to do that. Yeah, you can attack all you want. Hammer Snout. Caller is actually a pretty annoying card for Frelio or Targon to deal with. Third spoils. Wow. That is interesting. We're going to try to keep track of that. It could just be another Cosmic Youngling, but hey, that could be a Gnar or something too. Weapon. Alright, Weapon does actually get it out of our range of, you know, killing. Oh, never mind. We have Ruthless Predator. I think I'd rather save that for Rek'Sai maybe. Alright, let's do Caller here. And we want to hit Snapdraw Swarm so we can proc Lurk on defense turn. Really good follow-up. What are we doing about this? Maybe putting some damage on it and then just threatening the rest? We're gonna proc Lurk this turn, putting Rek'Sai to 5. Snapdraw Swarm ideally puts her up to 6. Then my next attack turn I can put her up to 8, 9, 10 if we hit... What's this? Spell Shield? Oh, alright. Sounds good. Transpoles hit the Eula. Stand against me. Hmm? So as long as we don't whiff Lurk on our next two swings, Rek'Sai will level. Gotta worry about like harsh winds and stuff like that on Rek'Sai's summon, but that is a direction for us to go at least. Yep. Not just swarm. Hit. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Another one. All right. Hey, we'll vulnerable that too. No worries. Your cosmic unicorns are all vulnerable. Hey, that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, ironic card to play there. Good theming. So let's play out Sharkling. Watch us get that avalanche now. It'd be so tragic. You know you wanna. And then maybe not have Frostbite mana for me. Oh, that's a Frostbite. Holy. That makes our Rek'Sai a bit safer to Frostbite now. Because they just used one. Maybe they don't have two. If they have two, then I'm kind of sad. Nice. Alright, so we do have the Rek'Sai level, which is really good. Oh, holy. What is that? Shared Spoils, Dark and Spear. Alright. As long as we don't whip Lurk right here. If we whiff Lurk right here, it is so incredibly tragic, by the way. Um, let's do... Mm, 3-1. Grab the 1-4, because it's going to go up to 2. Let's grab this, and then we can send these as well. Alright, we hit. We hit! Let's go! Big Rek'Sai level! Now we get to clean up the elusive. We get to threaten both unicorns. We're threatening a good amount of damage. We got some resources back. All good stuff, all good. Hopefully they don't have like a mid game power card to just blow us out. Okay, I'll draw, sure. Still dying. You do get the trade back now, but we are killing the youngling. Cool. That also puts weapon back in their hands. But we're going into seven, right? Two, four, six, yeah. We're going to 7, so they can't Anaka yet. Anaka would actually be kind of annoying. Play out the Hatchling, why not? Don't think it matters. And then we can do Dunebreaker or Xerxereth. Xerxereth if I want to open, right? That way I get the Spell Shield. Otherwise, Xerxereth Dunebreaker for the plus 1 attack. I think Xerxereth is definitely just better. Here's some overwhelmed spell shields. Nothing stops me. 
Shabna. Yeah, I'm just gonna open attack this. That way I can't get outed by second avalanche or a buried in ice or anything like that. Send it. Oh wow, I hit another XI on top. Okay, that's a bit extra. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> what a crazy game. And the final deck I have for you is the best burn aggro deck of the meta, and that is Samira Fizz. Coming in with a win rate of 54.36% and a play rate of 3.46%, it is the aggro deck to beat. Its best matchups include Viego Freljord, Akshan Nidalee, Shivana Aesol Midrange Dragons, and also Heimer Nora, surprisingly. The worst matchups are Jace Targon, Darius Nar, Vayne Gwen, and also Jinx Samira Discard. So, a funny story about Samira Fizz, I am covering it again, and this is back to its previous iteration. So, when the deck came out, it was super strong with Shelly and Burblefish, and then that strategy got nerfed and it moved to Monkeys. Wow, and then Monkeys got nerfed, so it moved back to Shelly, and then Shelly just got nerfed, so now it's back to Monkeys again, woohoo! It's just going back and forth with whatever is like not the previously nerfed version, so yeah. Now we're just back on the Monkey version of Samira Fizz, and it's doing really well so far. It's got the triple warning shot for plunder proccing, all out when we do proc plunder, really good. Elegant Edge, really good plunder card as well. Triple Fizz, really annoying early game body, can develop him, level him, then he's a pretty good pressure win con later. Jagged Butcher, just like Elegant Edge, really good plunder unit. Stylish Shot, uh, just like Warning Shot, but better. Stylish Shot's really broken. I think this is like the best card in the deck. And uh, yeah, we also have pr uh, Pirouette in here, by the way. Pirouette is just as it was for this deck prior to the patch, right? The patch nerfed Pirouette, but not for this deck at all. It still uses Pirouette at full power because the plunder that we do every single turn will make Pirouette still cost one. So yeah, this deck feels no changes. That's also one of the main reasons why um, Samira Fizz is still really good. Triple Father Fury, nice card as well. Annoying Elusive, Monkey Business for early burn. Also getting the Plunder proccing going, super nice. Samira, of course, really strong still. Two Noxion Fervor for lethal attempts. Pirouette because it's still good. Barb Chain for draw refill. I have Nagako Boros for draw refill. And then rounding it out, we are back on Triple Powder Pandemonium. Even after the mana nerf from like two patches ago, it is still super good, apparently. We can use this as like a Decimate Finisher or just attack a whole bunch and then get a couple cheeky monkeys in there before they die and we get even more damage. Yay! So yeah, this is just like the burn aggro deck to play, so it would seem in the first week of the new patch. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're having a very fun aggro match. We are playing against Jin Annie, and we did Samira on two, which is like the main way we win. <laughs> Cute little pouncy ma, I wish I had one. I have it, I just didn't equip it. So let's get rid of Pandemonium and probably one of these. Maybe the Elegant Edge. I want to keep Butcher for the body. And we can do like uh, Flare plus Butcher. And his 3 HP is very good into their deck. Alright, I guess we're high rolling. That's a really good hand overall. We just have like anything we want to do and more. So if they play Annie on one or anything on one, we only get outplayed by Sunhawk. I mean, Stagehand sucks too, but Sunhawk is the worst for us. We want to just play Samira on attack 2 and hope they don't have a stun yet. Because Samira controlling the early board is really, really important in this matchup. Give Samira a challenger. And it looks like we are getting away with it. So let's grab that Corsair. It's because our deck has access to refill and draw. Theirs does not. So if we're able to just trade over their units and whittle their resources down to like two or three cards in hand they are much less threatening than we are all right go ahead and play first action and then i will probably flare butcher right and then we have a fearsome blocker oh they open attacked um yeah i'm just taking four then i can't really do much about it yeah let's just skip block that's fine we'll go ahead and get fizz down here prefect cool all right, now we can play the turn a bit slow. We have Silas Shot lead. Puts Fizz into Elusive. Shows them, hey, I want to attack this turn. And get my Silas Shot back. 
And we'll do Butcher. Witness. Witness Samira. Um, that is okay. Then we Butcher again. And then we send it. Um, they're probably going to block with Witness. I don't think they block with Prefect, right? If they do, then that's good for us. And we'll get a style shot back. Yep. And then we can play Barb Chain and draw. Yep. We'll have Samira level on turn 5. Another Barb Chain, another Barb Chain. Very awkward. Awkward hand there. Jin. I kind of wish I was on Pirouette. I feel like if we're on Pirouette, we just win the game here. But now we're actually in a pretty bad spot. Let's go ahead and Warning Shot and Barb Chain, right? Just when you thought you'd seen it all. Can at least be on a Samira level here and pass. The curtain rises. That's shooting my fizz, right? These don't actually target, so Fizz can't stop this. So we'll go ahead and do like that. We could also do some weird play where we play all out on Fizz and he stays alive. Uh, that could also be worth, but I kind of want to kill the Jin if I'm going to play all out. So I'm definitely going to commit a Jagged Butcher here and Samira here. Keep Jin alive. I guess it's okay. We just replay Fizz and we get a free Stylus shot, right? Or a free flare, I mean, from Samira. Yes. I will allow for no Cheat the block on the Jin. Fizz gets shot, no problem. Get our free flare. And then we play Fizz. We can play our other barb chain as well. We're just gonna go up to like maximum cards in our hand next turn. We're drawing five round start. We have four in hand, so I guess that's okay, right? <laughs> We're literally drawing five cards. Most of it's gonna be fleeting as well. Samira, Father Fury, Monkey Business, Jagged Butcher, and All Out. Not bad. Style of shots. And play Father Fury. Yeah, break. Cool. Witness. Targeting Fizz as if that's gonna work. That's a target, so like, I don't know what the idea here was. Go ahead and do Challenger Samira. Negate that. Dagon Butcher. Alright. This is pretty easy. I think we're in a good spot. Demo me? Sure, ahead. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Yep. The few. So we're going to grab the 3 2, and then we're going to uh, attack with all this and do an all out on Fizz. That puts us to A. This basically shows them lethal, so they have to do something here. They have to block, right? That's also stunning my what? My 2 1. Alright. Then we can do another all out on Fizz. That gets our rally before Samira dies. And we just have Elusive Lethal. We don't really have to do anything else, right? We can replay Samira, which is kind of cool. Yeah. We're a bit cringe. But, yeah. All we have to do is attack with the Fizz. Just want to show that we also had another Samira. <laughs> kind of insane gameplay there. So yeah, to wrap things up, the top three decks should be very familiar to you, as they've been good for quite some time now. Nice to see Lurk is in a really good spot though. Feels like Lurk hasn't been top three in a while, and it was always more of like a solid one-trick deck. 
But yeah, I wanted to make sure you guys have the most up-to-date list for these decks, as they do differ from last patch, and even from the last few videos I've covered them in, this has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!